In this tutorial, we are going to check out how to set up a basic tune for a centrifugal supercharger. The first thing you should do is just create a bog standard inline four engine, make it a little easier by using all forged internals so that stress doesn't play into your choices. And once you are done with building that baseline naturally aspirated engine, the things you need to do to prepare for supercharging it are pretty simple. Lower the compression to something like 7-ish, depends on the era, but we are building this engine in modern times with fuel injection, so that is more than enough of a drop. Open up the manifold so that it flows plenty. Open up the headers so that they do the same and the exhaust so that there is no barrier to optimal flow. The outcome should be an engine that is not making all that much power, but it is functioning very well and is very low on stress. Anyway, I recommend that you switch to 4 graph mode because that will contain all the information we need to do a proper tune. And now, let's supercharge this thing. And the default setup is a Roots Supercharger and you could change up to Screw as well. No problems there, the game knows about it. In this very early version there is no preset for you for the Centrifugal. So what you will get there is a Supercharger that doesn't build any boost. And that is something that we are going to change. Briefly, let's talk about the differences between centrifugal superchargers and positive displacement superchargers, that is, roots and screw. Centrifugal superchargers are basically half a turbo. It is just the compressor side of a turbo that is driven by a belt and then internally has additional gearing that makes it spin faster. Typical RPM for a centrifugal supercharger are something around, for modern ones, is something around 70,000 RPM. So these things are pretty fast. The basic functionality of a supercharger is of course that it is connected to the RPM of the crank. And that means that we need plenty of gear ratio in order to get to the desired speeds of that centrifugal supercharger. But first, let's guess a good size. One way to do the size estimation is to use the game's presets. Use a turbocharger instead, because after all, we are looking at a turbocharged engine, uh, just half of it in terms of turbo. And here, this seems pretty solid. What size is it? Well, well, 50 on the compressor side. So let's take that to heart and switch to centrifugal and set it to 50. Size alone will not do the trick. Usually what you are expecting to be uh, setting here for the gear ratio, for anything to happen really, is something over 15, I could say. That's a good first approximation. Let's up this to 15 and we see, oh yes, indeed it does spool. One more thing that you should do and probably want to do in general is to have the supercharger run free. As in, it just builds whatever boost it builds, and we take it. At the moment, you spot here that we are reaching about a boost of 0.3 bar, 0.35 bar even. And now as we are increasing the supercharger gear ratio, that boost buildup will increase because we are pushing more air into the engine. So let's slide this up, and it is recalculating. At 20, that's already spinning pretty fast, but you see we're still inside the uh, non-shaded area, which is the safe zone for this supercharger. And it is doing its job there, but unfortunately we are, as you can see, a little low on the curve. Let's see if that changes if we once we hit the barrier. It is slightly better, but not quite. You move this line up or down, also by the size of the compressor. In this case, we are too low, so you might want to put in some more air to build pressure sooner and arrive in this optimal zone for compression a little earlier and stay within it for longer. So what we can do from here is to increase the size, which will push more air into the engine. So let's up it by five mil 
And you see that, oh yes, perfect, we are now traversing that green island of efficiency without getting too close to the surge zone over to the left. But now you see also that we are running into mechanical stress. That is because we still have it geared as if it were the smaller supercharger. This one doesn't need it anymore. So we can reduce this and thus keep it from exploding. By lowering the gear ratio, you are also again moving down the line. So what happens here is that we will need to increase the size again and then go to a lower ratio to offset that. And here we have a pretty much optimal setup. You could push it a little bit further because it's not running into mechanical stress, which starts right there. So we are good about here. And a little bit of stress is of course not an issue. This is roughly what you're looking for from your centrifugal supercharger. In case you are running into uh, some stresses, for instance power density, that is the dotted blue line, or a gearbox reliability, that would be a red dotted line, or maybe internal stress that you would see up here, then you might want to consider to actually limit this so that it doesn't build boost forever. That will flatten this curve in the compressor map and we will be able to see that right there if we for instance limit it to one bar of boost that will also mean unfortunately that you are pushing it into an area where it is way less efficient 55 percent versus previously 69 percent efficiency so that will mean that it runs a lot hotter the more red the area is that you're running through the hotter the air that is getting produced by the supercharger and the higher the friction or rather the power needs are for the supercharger to drive it to compress that amount of air. You can always check the friction here and you see this one escalating quickly. If we are comparing this to an unlimited one, you see that it basically doesn't make any difference in terms of how much power it needs. So you get that additional power for free if you can cope with it. That of course is very specific to this case and your cases will look different. Now that we have set up this beautiful turbo, that is not a turbo but rather a supercharger, we can retune the engine to make it properly set up throughout. For that we are first going to up the compression again to something that makes the graph go a little bit yellowish towards the top something like this and then we are going to adjust the flows throughout the engine by making the uh, sizes smaller for the manifold as well as the header until the flows are roughly hitting 100% at maximum RPM. If you want to go for an eco tune of course well, that's probably not going to happen if you're running a centrifugal supercharger but then you would be trying to overshoot it a little, little bit. Just consider that that produces extra heat. The intercooler size is also important, but it will reduce the amount of power that you produce as well as it will generate extra heat if it is less efficient due to a smaller size. And with that, we have set up a beautiful little centrifugal supercharger.